Bunny and Clyde is a chapter book for young readers by Megan McDonald. It features a bunny and a chipmunk who decide they're tired of being good. But when they try to be bad, they end up doing good deeds instead. Hi, I'm Dan Skinner, and welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Ahead, I'll talk with the author about the book and the inspiration behind it to see if this is a book you'd like to add to your child's library. Megan McDonald writes chapter books and picture books for children. Her previous books include the Judy Moody and Friends series for early readers and the Judy Moody and Stink series for older readers. Megan, welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Thanks so much for having me. Well, we're going to talk about a new book with some new characters for you. Bunny and Clyde, tell us about the inspiration behind it. Well, most people know me for Judy Moody and Stink, who are human characters. So I decided that it would be fun to mix it up a little bit and and, um, have some animal characters be my main characters. So with Bunny and Clyde, the inspiration really came from the name because... There are famous bank robbers from the 30s that are um, that I grew up, you know, with the song and the movie about them called Bonnie and Clyde. So I was kind of riffing off of these bad guys, Bonnie and Clyde. And I just came up with the name years ago and I just had it scribbled on scribbled down on a napkin that I wrote a note on. And I had two bad bunnies and I. Um, it started out, Bunny and Clyde were two bad bunnies, except Clyde was not a bunny. Clyde was a chipmunk. So instead of having them both be bunnies, I changed Clyde to a chipmunk, and I got my animal characters then that had a little bit of contrast between them and uh, had the inspiration of that they started out, they are always good, and they decide at the beginning that they want to be bad, but they don't know how. So for what age would you recommend this book? Well, I would say um, I just read it to a class of third graders and they were howling, laughing. But I think the humor probably, it's a short chapter book. So for independent readers, you'd probably have to be first, second, third grade. But you could read it aloud even to a four or five-year-old, I think, if they're, if they're, at that stage where they're wanting a little bit more than a picture book. There's still a lot of artwork, so um, there's a lot to break up, and the chapters are short chapters. You touched upon it already, but let's talk a little bit more about the plot here of Bunny and Clyde, (laughs) because no matter how hard they try, in most cases, they're trying to be bad, but it turns out they're actually doing a good deed. Exactly. So, it's a little tricky because, of course, we don't really want to inspire kids to be bad. But I thought it would be so much fun to play with the idea of being bad because I think all kids and all humans, you know, we do bad things sometimes. And so um, I thought it would be fun to play around with the concept of, OK, they've never been bad. So they decide they're going to do something bad, but they don't really know what that is or how to do it because they've always followed the rules. They've always turned their library books in on time and composted their apple cores. And so they decide, well, since we don't know how to be bad, where would we go to learn something? The library, of course, right? So they decide to go to the library and they walk in and they ask their friend Rowena, do you have any bad books here? And she works at the library and she's kind of like, well, I like to think we have mostly good books in the library. So they get some books like Two Bad Mice by Beatrix Potter and they try to learn about being bad. And they start out um, kind of like pulling pranks on their friends in the neighborhood. So, for example, they decide they're going to prank their friend and toilet paper the rose bushes, but it turns out that night is the first unexpected frost and the toilet paper has kept the roses from freezing. So no matter what they do, they think they're trying to do something mischievous, but it turns out that it has a good ending. And so the whole way through, I get to play with um, being good versus being bad. And I had the greatest pleasure when I got to read this aloud to these third graders the kids were following along and anticipating, but they were yelling out, 
they're good. No, they're bad. No, they're good. So they were right there with me, um, you know, with that concept of good versus bad. And, and there's another scene because what kid hasn't been tempted to pick flowers that they shouldn't? <laughs> They come across this yard that's just filled with these beautiful yellow flowers. And they just say, we're going to be bad. We're going to pick them all. But you can pick the story up from there. Exactly. Like, who doesn't? It's so hard to resist when you see, you know, beautiful flowers. And I always, if I'm walking at the park or something, I always hear a parent say, don't pick them. Just smell. Just don't touch, you know. So I know that thing in a kid where it's just so irresistible to want to just pick all the flowers. So they go and they pick all the yellow flowers. And then it turns out, of course, they're dandelions. And the neighbor thanks them for they haven't had time to go out and weed their garden. So they thank them for weeding the garden for them. And they're like, darn, we thought we were bad, but we're good again. (laughs) I'm talking with Megan McDonald about Bunny and Clyde. And our conversation continues in a moment. If you appreciate this discussion, please subscribe, like, and click on the bell so you'll know when I post new interviews. And thank you. Well, there are a couple instances where they were bad, and they did have to pay the consequences. Because she messed up her room, they drew pictures on the walls, and they had to clean up their mess and scrub off the crayon. Exactly. So mama was not happy with them. So of course, when they do, uh, when they're, they realize they need some experience. So they're trying to work up to something bigger and badder. And so when they draw with crayon on the wall, of course, you know, there is a consequence when we do bad things. So you have to, um, you know, wash off the crayon from the walls and scrub the walls. So most of the things are just kind of innocent things. But Um, or mischief. They want to to have some mischief. I grew up in a household where I had four sisters and we played a lot of pranks, but the pranks were usually inspired by my dad. My dad was the one who played pranks on us. So we kind of grew up with pranking and that that was, you know, one form of humor or joking. And another thing your characters experience as they're committing what they think are bad things that actually turn out to be good deeds, they start to feel guilty and they talk about your stomach feels <laughs> off. And, you know, so their, their guilty conscience on a sort of a subconscious level is claim, no, you really shouldn't be doing this. Exactly. Because I think we, I wanted to get at, you know, the humor of it, but there's also the aspect of if you do something bad, you don't feel good about it. And they've never experienced this. So um, I think it's really important to show that kids have the, you know, that consciousness of good and bad and what they are supposed to do and know when they're doing something wrong. And um, yeah. So I think in Judy Moody, there's a scene in one of the Judy Moody books where she tells a lie and she starts to itch all over. So that was kind of the idea of what I was going for, that they would, you know, just start to feel lousy if they've done something bad. As you pointed out, this is a chapter book, so it's not a picture book, but it does still have illustrations. Tell us a bit about those illustrations. The artwork is done by Scott Nash, and he is an artist I've wanted to work with for years. So as I mentioned, I had the idea, or just a very bare concept for Bunny and Clyde years ago, and I knew that I wanted them to I wanted to start out with them trying to be bad, but I was going to try to flip it on its head. And um, I had met Scott years ago and really admired his artwork and always wanted to work with him. So usually the author or the writer doesn't, you know, have any real say in who they will choose for an illustrator. But I've worked with Mary Lee Donovan at Candlewick Press for so many years And of course, she comes up with ideas and then, you know, she'll include me in the process. So I was thinking about Scott, but I wasn't sure if I should just say that or, you know, anyway, she read the manuscript and 
from the first time she read the manuscript, she called me up and she said, what about Scott Nash? And I was so thrilled because I really, really love his artwork. He um, He's just a master at, even though the artwork, well, the cover, of course, is in color, but even though the artwork is in uh, black and white, he just, he makes the characters so endearing, but he also gives them, um, you know, just so much life, like in the scene where they, um, I don't know if you can see this, but they decide they're going to try, this is their getaway bike, and they're going to try to uh, disguise themselves. So so Clyde, who's a chipmunk, wears a bunny mask, and Bunny wears a chipmunk mask. And um, he just captures the humor and the energy of it so beautifully. And when he first read the manuscript, he said, I'm picturing a wanted poster. So um, that inspired the wanted poster in the book where Bunny and Clyde uh, are are sort of pretend criminals. And this is their wanted poster that they're known for playing pranks and um, picking flowers. <laughs> So will we see more Bunny and Clyde adventures in the future? We will. Um, I just finished. We When I wrote the book, I didn't really plan it as a series. But what always happens with me is I get so involved with the characters and I'm having so much fun with them that I start to imagine other adventures for these characters. So um, the next book, which I just finished recently, is called Bunny and Clyde on the Lamb. And in this one, their friend Hamilton uh, loses a tooth, has a loose tooth. And when he loses the tooth, Bunny and Clyde explain about you can put the tooth under your pillow and the tooth fairy will come and you'll get a coin or you'll get money. So you'll have some penny candy money, right? So, um, so he puts the coin under the pillow. Anyway, his his tooth fairy money goes missing and Bunny and Clyde, everybody turns to Bunny and Clyde and thinks that they are the culprit, so they have to go on the run. The book is Bunny and Clyde by Megan McDonald. Megan, thank you for talking with me today. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's so much fun to talk about Bunny and Clyde. If you'd like to purchase Bunny and Clyde, I've placed a link for you in the description below. Well, thank you for watching this edition of the Kids Bookshelf. And if you'd like to see more videos about children's books and their authors, be sure to subscribe, like, and click on the bell to be notified about future programs. And if you're interested in books for young adult and older readers, be sure to check out my Some Books Considered channel, and you'll find a link to that below as well. I'm Dan Skinner. Until next time, keep sharing the gift of reading. Thank you.